Salam alaikum fratelli e sorelle, rieccoci qua. Eh, spero che a voi eh, sta andando molto bene il mese di Ramadan, spero che tutti voi lo state facendo. Oggi eh, ho deciso di farvi vedere un video di un imam molto grande che risponde a delle domande eh, riguardo a degli errori sul Corano. Guardiamo insieme. Dr. Dakar, you said there isn't any mistake in Quran. I see more than 20 mistakes in Arabic grammar and I will tell you some of them. Inna alladhina amanu wa alladhina hadu wa sabi'un. He said in Baqara and Hajj, inna alladhina amanu wa alladhina hadu wa sabi'in, which is right. Asabi'un or Asabi'in? Number one. Number two. Brother, he one, said, one, brother one question one at question. a time, yeah, please. Yeah, but at the same thing, he said in Surah Taha 63, Inna hadhani la sahiran. Mistake. Inna hadhani la sahiran. Can you explain that? And there is more than that uh, mistake. Brother, brother will allow you only the one. first part of the question. The second part will not allow because we have stated we'll allow okay. one question at a time so others get a chance to. Okay. The brother has asked a very good question. I would like to be more concordant and agreeing. He has mentioned all 20 grammatical points. And the book is referring to Abdul Fadi. Abdul Fadi, correct? Is the Quran infallible? I can yeah. see some things. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, my side is good. <laughs> I will answer all 20 together. Because I've read the book. I'll answer all 20, inshallah. Inshallah. Point number one, brother. Point number one. Point number one to be noted that all Arabic grammar is taken from the Quran. Quran was the highest Arabic book, a book which has the maximum level of highest literature. All the Arabic grammar has been derived from the Quran. Quran is the textbook of grammar. Since Quran is the textbook of grammar and all the grammar is derived from the Quran, the Quran can never have a mistake. Point number one. <laughs> point number two. Point number two. Point number two. It is like you know taking a ruler and the ruler is there, has a measurement, and you're saying the measurement is wrong. It sounds illogical. Point number two. In the different tribes of Arabia, and you know Arabic, and Dr. William Campbell also will agree with me. In different Arabic tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. In some Arabic tribe, the word is feminine. The same word is even masculine in the other tribes of Arabia. In different tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. Even the gender keeps on changing. So will you check Quran with that faulty grammar? No. And furthermore, the eloquence of Quran is so high. It's so high, it is far superior. And you know there are various books on the internet you go 12 grammatical mistake, 21 grammatical mistake, Abdul Fadi, 20 grammatical mistake. Do you think the Christian people took out these mistakes? Who took out these mistakes? Do you know who took out? The Muslims, the Muslim scholars like Zamakshari, what they did that the Quran grammar is so high that it goes against the conventional use of the Arabic. The Quran grammar is so high to prove the Quranic grammar was high, they gave examples. And I'll give you a couple of examples which will answer all these 20 questions. They give the example, like we read in the Quran, it says that the people of Lut, salam, they rejected all the messengers. They rejected the messenger that's mentioned. Dr. William Campbell said, the people of Noah, they rejected the messengers. We know from history that there was only one messenger sent to them. So it has a grammatical mistake. Quran should have said, the people rejected the messenger, not messengers. I agree with you. With layman grammar like how you and I know, it may be a mistake. But if you read the books written by Arabs, what is the beauty of the Quran? The beauty of the Quran is, why does the Quran differ messengers instead of messenger? You know why? Because we know that the basic message of all the messengers was same. That there is one God about Tawheed, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By mentioning the people of Ruth salam, the people of Noah rejected the messenger. It says by rejecting Ruth salam, they are indirectly rejecting all the messengers. <laughs> so 
see the beauty, see the eloquence, Alhamdulillah. Wow. You may think it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. Similarly, people like Anush Suraj says that Quran says, Kun Fayakun, be and it is. It should be Kun Fakana, be and it was. Agreed, past tense is Kun Fakana in Arabic. It's not Kun Fayakun, but the Kun Fayakun is more superior. It says, Allah, it was, it is, and can do. Past, present, and future. Thank you, Dr. Naik. Mashallah, mashallah. This Imam is really bravissimo. I'm eh, really happy that he has the eh, eh, experience to be able to respond to these questions. As he has explained, the Quran has never been modified, never eh, been copied, never been copied. Eh, e appunto ogni, ogni sua parola, ogni sua sura eh, è molto anche difficile da, da interpretare perché anche una semplice parola può, può avere diversi significati ed è anche molto difficile da spiegare eh, e anche e soprattutto tradurla perché anche nel tradurlo ci sono anche diversi significati eh, molti non riescono a, a spiegare il significato in altre lingue eh, infatti mo anche posso dire che molti studiosi comunque prendono in riferimento il Corano per scoprire tante cose eh, nel, nel, comunque nel nostro mondo e nel nostro corpo eh, e io posso dire come da convertita che mh, o, o comunque posso dimostrare che mh, leggendo il Corano non è come leggere un libro qualsiasi che tu leggi fluemente la prima pagina io semplicemente con una semplice pagina mi ci vogliono circa 10 minuti per capire il suo significato come, come appunto mi ricordo quando era a scuola posso fare un esempio eh, mi ricordo quando era a scuola quando c'era letteratura o comunque la poesia eh, la, mia, la mia maestra mi diceva o professoressa mi diceva eh, Simo leggimi questa poesia e eh, spiegami il significato la stessa cosa del Corano quindi posso dire appunto che il Corano non è un libro qualsiasi ma il Corano è un libro sacro infatti ci vogliono gli studiosi come Imam, come Sheikh che comunque devono interpretare nei migliori dei modi per farcelo capire a noi nel, nel modo più semplice eh, il Corano e, e appunto voglio, voglio comunque farvi capire che eh, ogni parola che noi diciamo a noi musulmani ha un beneficio specialmente per il Ramadan quindi leggere il Corano anche ogni singola parola è praticamente moltiplicata e duplicata specialmente nel periodo del Ramadan eh, e anche comunque le parole del Corano sono parole molto forti che vi fanno riflettere, che vi fanno mettere anche timore di Allah e, e tante altre cose buone che comunque ci servono a noi musulmani eh, sfruttate questo periodo nei migliori dei modi eh, cercando di ascoltare il più possibile il Corano ma specialmente leggerlo in arabo eh, inshallah spero di farlo anch'io presto eh, va bene, allora ci vediamo presto inshallah eh, un buon Ramadan Salam alaikum